worthy to be praised. You've tuned in to Better Life Faith Church. It's a national the ministry that teaches you a better way of living. And we give God the glory and the praise. Let's just celebrate the Lord today. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. As even as our old, hallelujah, late Dr. Hinton said, if Jesus got up, we don't have to be down. Hallelujah. So we give God the glory and the praise for all that he has in store for us on today. Glory to God. The word of the Lord in 1 Corinthians 6 and 14 says, and God raised the Lord with also raised us up by his power. Job 19 and 25 says, for the Redeemer lives. He is the the last will that stand on the earth and our scripture today glory to God in first Peter 1 and 3 said blessed be the Lord God of our father of Lord Jesus Christ according to his great mercy for he has called us to be born again living the hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and we give God the glory and the praise hallelujah glory to God come on let's stand on our feet hallelujah and we're going to exalt the name of God and honor him today glory to God he is worthy to be praised hallelujah father we just honor you today just tell the Lord thank you today come on tell the Lord thank you on today thank you Jesus for being our resurrection power thank you Jesus for being our strong tower thank you Jesus for being our healer thank you Jesus for being all that you are in our lives in the name of Jesus we thank you right now for signs wonders and miracles we believe your word God we thank you right now for the glory of the Lord have your way in this place in the name of Jesus move by your spirit right now father touch our man of God as he bring forth the word we give you all the glory and praise for the atmosphere is set in the name of Jesus we thank you that souls are saved backside of the store and minds are renewed in the name of Jesus father right now we recalibrate Break this atmosphere and decree and declare that the glory of the Lord is in this place. We decree and declare deliverance take place. We decree and declare souls be saved in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Come on, celebrate the Lord today. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Tell the neighbor I'm excited about Jesus. Come on, tell the neighbor I'm excited about Jesus. We excited about the Lord today. He is worthy to be glorified. He is worthy of the honor. Hallelujah. And we just bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, cup those hands as we exalt him today. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's nobody like your Lord. Come on, cup those hands. Come on. Yeah. Come on, we came to give him glory. We came to exalt the name of the Lord. Come on, come on, tap those hands, come on, hey! Hallelujah, Jesus, hey! Oh, clap your hands, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, shout, hey! Unto God, oh, clap your hands, all ye people. 
the voice of triumph. Oh, 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 oh. with the voice of triumph. Oh, 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 oh.
He's deserving of the praise. He's deserving of the glory. Yes, nobody like you, Jesus. Come on, come on. I'm talking about your Savior. I'm talking about your God for what he's done for you. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, hallelujah, Jesus. Who to dig it up? The Hindu gods dig it up. But there's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about the name of Jesus. Oh, there's power in His name. Come yeah. on, let's say it. There's power in His name. There's power in His name. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. They triple at my name because I got power. Oh, you got to get personal and say, I got power. Hey. Oh, no, 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 no. I got power. Oh, no, 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 no. They know Jesus. They named Paul, but they know April. Hey, hey. You got to put your name in and say, they know me because that's hey. power. Hallelujah. That lives within me. Honorable Kosha. And we don't have to be down when Jesus is backing us up. Hallelujah. And we honor the Lord today. Let's stand and receive our man and woman of God on this resurrection Sunday. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God another moment of praise. Hallelujah. That ain't nothing. We'll just go buy another one. Come on now. Come on now. Oh, that one at that. How about come on, that? Pastor. <laughs> come on, come on. Come, come on, on, let's give God another moment. Hallelujah. 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 Glory Hallelujah. God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Well, you know, uh, this is. Now the world say Easter. This is Resurrection Sunday. Come on now. Come on now. And uh, I was sharing this with you on the way here. I remember four years ago. COVID. Come on now. Now we were here in service, you and I and a couple others. But we told the congregation, we said, listen, we know you can't be out here. But put, get dressed up anyway. Yeah. Amen. And I Amen. got the report. They was at home watching online, dressed up. Dressed up. Dressed but here up. we are four years later. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. Somebody give God a Amen. Moment. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. After Jesus. Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Get your expectation level up. Come on now. Keep it up. Yes. And expect to hear God. Come yes. on and greet the folks, Pastor Lord. Greet in the name of Jesus. You know what? This is the biggest party. This is the biggest party for the saints of God. That's right. We need to come for our party. Say, it's my party. Yeah. It's my party. Come yeah. on, man. It's my party. Yeah. The party belongs to us. That's right. And if you're not invited to this party, you need to ask yourself, what's the greatest thing I can do for myself? Mm. What can the greatest things I, if I love myself, yeah. the greatest thing I can do for myself, get saved. Get saved. Get saved. Get come saved. on now. Everybody need to get saved. Get saved. Get saved. Get saved. In other words, if I love myself. Yes. And I want an everlasting covenant yes. with my God. Yes. The best thing you can do is get saved. Get saved. Get saved. It's a party. It's, a party. it's going on. Yes. It's going on. Yes. And I'm part of the party. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. One of the great things about Christianity, we're not a religion. That's right. Amen. Christianity is not a religion. That's it's a relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Oh, yes, and that is what distinguishes us from others. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. And this same Jesus, this same Jesus. who died yes. lives now. Yes, yes. amen. See, we thank God for this or that. Thank God for the, for, 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 the, for the crucifixion, the birth, the crucifixion, all of that. But none of that wouldn't mean anything. If it wasn't for the resurrection. Yeah. Hmm. That's the difference in us and others. Yes, amen. Our King, our Savior, our Lord is alive 
and he's living on the inside of us. Amen. Yes. On that Amen. note, prepare your hearts for giving. Pastor Laura, come on and bring us our offering message Amen. for this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. I tell you, I'm excited today because I love my God. You know, everybody else don't love, but I love my God. I mean, you know, he has proven himself. He has proven himself. Say, he proven himself. How did he prove himself? Did you wake up this morning? He's proven himself. Do you still got blood in your veins? He's proven himself. Are you in your right mind? He has proven himself. Deuteronomy 30 chapter and verse 19. And it said, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that you set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you and your descendant might live. Now, this is a sowing. It's telling you if you sow this, if you sow this seed, he's telling you you will get a harvest. Yes. He said, choose me, choose life, that you and your seed. Yes. See, the thing about this, people have told us for, that, for years that it don't matter what you give. It don't matter how you give. But God said it does matter how you give. See, the thing about this, how I give is really based on my heart. All right. All right. My heart decides how much I'm going to give because my heart is connected to my giving. So people say, it doesn't matter. My God know my heart. Right. He do know your heart. And he know how your heart is thinking in the name of Jesus according to the word of God. See, the thing about this is that when you sow your seed, it connect me to where I want to go. Come on now. I want to go somewhere. Say, I want to go somewhere. Because my harvest is bigger than the seed. Sometimes, look at, look at your seed. Look at your seed. Say, look how little it is. And compared to where I'm going. Look how little my seed is compared to where I'm going. Because the harvest is always bigger than the seed. Come on now. And so what the devil try to do is tell you, you know what? You ain't got to do that. You ain't got to sow that seed. And we learn from Abraham because the trust was given to him. Either sow it to God or sow it to the devil. Yes. He was standing before when the devil said, give it to me. And God said, give it to me. He had to make a choice. Give it to me or give it to. And he had to make a Listen here. Abraham said, no, yes, it belongs to God. Yes. Say it belongs to God. Yes. Now in that seed is what we call yeast. And if you know anything about yeast, it's made up with flour, water, and oil. And we know what every yeast does, what it does. It rises up. Come on now. Come on now. It rises up. So in Leviticus, the second chapter, in verse 1, it said, When anyone offer grain offering to the Lord, his, his offering shall be like fine flour. It said fine flour. And he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. He shall bring it to Aaron's house, to the priest, and one of them should take from his hand for a fine flour and oil with frankincense, and the priest shall burn it, and this shall be a memorable. Say, my, my, my seed is a memorable. My seed is memorable. Say, God said, I remember your seed. See, see, God said, the devil, don't you believe? He remember my seed. Now, with the, with the yolk, with the yeast inside my seed, and we know that it rise. Now, what it does, it elevate my seed. In other words, it put my seed up. When I, when I put that money down in the, in, in, the, in the bucket, it put my seed up. In other words, if they fall down, it rise up. Come on now. It made my seed greater than what I put in. Come on, y'all. It make me increase in strength. What do what, what you mean? What, what mean your strength? In other words, when I'm afraid to do something, my seed gave me strength. My seed gave me strength to walk through them doors. My seed gave me the strength to make a decision. My seed gave me strength. Come on, y'all. My seed grown up. My seed stirred up my ashes. When I want to rebel, my seed said, don't do that. My seed helped me to stay put. My seed gave me direction. My seed, come on now. My seed is able to raise up dead things. Things that I have forgotten. Things that have lost. Things that have not done. My seed is a hey. Remember that day you told me this? Remember what you said years ago? Remember what I come up? My seed is doing that. My seed is to act as an army. When I need to fight the battle, my seed act as an army. I got 10,000 angels around me. I got angels waiting on my request. I got hey, my seed is doing that for me. My seed is able to put an end to a thing. 
to put an end to a thing. Some things don't need to continue in your life. Some things, some mouth need to shut up about you. Some people need to close their mouth about you. He put an end to them things. My seed caused the circumstance to be above. In other words, I got circumstance in front of God. And I need him to rise it up. Because this is important to me. Say, what's important to me is important to God. Say, what's important to me is important to God. Come on now. My seed is able to deal with pledges. Vows. Things that I deal with God. My seed is able to deal with that. Come on now. My seed is able to stir up the gift inside of me. I know that I'm gifted, but God ain't going to stir it up. I'm going to increase my gift. I'm going to increase my offer. Come on now. And my seed is able to give me higher raises. What you thought I didn't deserve, God said, you deserve it. I went to my boss and they had to tell him. that he said, yeah, you time you get a raise. Come on now. My seed did that for me. And my seed is able to reproduce. Reproduce. In other words, it don't make it what I gave. It going to reproduce. It going to reproduce. Come on now. See, the devil wants you to believe that it doesn't matter. But God said it matters. Say it matters. Because when I put that seed in the ground, it's going to rise up. And going to another level that I never could go to. See, it taking me somewhere that I could never get there. But that seed direct me in the name of Jesus. So when we give today, direct that seed. Because that seed is going somewhere in the name of Jesus. According to the word of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Come on, let's give our pastor another hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Every seed we've sown, we believe it. We decree it. It is already done. Hallelujah. We praise God for today's seed. Amen. Hallelujah. As it is Resurrection Sunday, you can think about all that God has done for us. Tell a neighbor, say, neighbor. Neighbor. God has been good. Been Come good. on, tell another neighbor, say, neighbor. Neighbor. God has been good. God has been good. Now, come on, let's cut those hands like this and we yeah. there for the glory and praise. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, as you sow your seed. Come on, say, it's so good. It's so good. And I really want to thank you, Jesus. Hey. You've been so good. And I really want to thank you, Lord. Hey. You've been so good. And I really want to thank you, Jesus. I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you, Lord. I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Yeah. Hey, go into your name, God. There's nobody like our Savior. Hallelujah. Come on. You've been so good. You've been so good. And I really want to thank you, Jesus. Hey, you've been so good. And I really want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. And I really want to thank you, Jesus. Hey, I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you, Lord. I really want to thank you. I really want to thank you, Lord. So good, say. So good. Come on, say it. So good to be. So good. Look over your life and say it. Thank you, Lord. So good. So good to be. So good. Hey. Thank you, Lord.
I'm telling you. Uh, I got a young, young church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Once again, we receive your, your seed on today. As Pastor Laura was saying, I was really thinking that. Folks, there is supernatural power in the seed. Yes, yes. Amen. That seed literally, not change, transformed. My amen. life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. amen. Yeah. That seed. That seed. Yes, that seed. That yeah. seed. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. Father, I glorify your name. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. You've been so gracious. You've yes. been so good. Lord Jesus, I thank you once thank again you, for this privilege. Never, never taking it lightly. Amen. I thank you for this pleasure to minister your word. The greatest calling anyone can have is to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord God, after many, many, many years, I cannot thank you enough. Now, Lord Jesus, as I minister your word, allow me to speak with holy boldness always with your compassion. And Jesus, I thank you for the anointing that continue to rest on this ministry where burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed. And I thank you for the transformation of lives. Yes, Lord, right now. And dear Jesus, I praise you as you continue to confirm your word as it gets preached with signs, wonders, and miracles. And the greatest miracle of them all is someone, someone, somewhere wants to know what must I do to be saved. And I thank you, Lord. As this seed word goes out, that a harvest of souls come. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Amen and amen. <laughs> glory. Now, those of you who know, I've been in this division of teachings called the promise, your faith, and the rest. The promise, your faith, and the rest. Now, those of you who have your Bibles, let's go to Hebrews 4. This is part of our foundation. Fourth chapter of Hebrews, verse 9. And it says, There remaineth, therefore, a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. 
Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Yes, yes. Unless any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Yeah. Now, those three verses I want to read from the Good News Translation. Yes, Lord. It says, as it is, however, there still remains for God's people a rest like God's resting on the seventh day. For those who receive that rest, which God promised, will rest from their own work, just as God rested from his. Let us then do our best to receive that rest so that no one of us will fail as they did because of their lack of faith. Hallelujah. Now, for the last couple of weeks, I gave you this biblical commentary concerning rest, and I want to read it again. It says, when you labor in the word of God to gain an understanding of God's promises and become rooted in them, it provides a rest for your soul. In other words, this rest that is available means that you are now able to live free from stress. Worry, fear, and anxiety, even in the midst of the worst of circumstances of life. You know that's supernatural yes, right there. To the natural mind, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. 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 How in the world can anybody be stress-free? Mm -hmm. How in the world can, can anybody not worry or not live in fear? You can do it in the rest. <laughs> Hallelujah. Then it says, when you release your faith for what God has promised you in his word, God's rest prevents you from growing weary and fainting in your mind while you're waiting for the manifestation. Yes. 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 But if there has been no labor, there will be no rest. Yeah. 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 Now, now, that ain't difficult. If a man don't work, he don't eat. Come on, man of God. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. Yeah. So if there's no labor, there will be no rest. And likely no manifestation either. So labor to enter into God's rest. So now when we read this, obviously, the deciding factor is if you're going to enter that rest, you've got to commit to laboring in the word of God. Yes. Amen. You've got to commit. I've got to commit to laboring in the word. Why? Because the rest is in the word. I commit to the word because the rest is there. Now, we also established that there are some steps entering this place where growing weary or fainting is not on your mind. Come on now. Come on. Yeah. See, this is exciting to know. Now, this doesn't happen overnight, but it is available. Yes. 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 See, he's saying there's a place you, you can get where fainting is no longer an option. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where you can remain stress free without any worry or fear while you're patiently waiting for the manifestation yes. of your promise. Yes. 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 Tell somebody I want this. I want this. Tell somebody I want the rest that God has for me. Yeah. 
Oh, my. Yeah. Now, once again, the steps in this order is this. And this is why we called it this. The promise, your faith, and then the rest. The promise, your faith, and then the rest. Now, last time I dealt with the promise. And one of the key things I established was 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. Let's quickly go there. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. And many of us know this by memory. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. All the promises of God. One translation says, Christ says yes to all of God's promises yes. so that they become true. That letting me know if he don't say yes, it can't come true. Voice translation says, in Jesus, we hear a res resounding yes to all of God's many promises. In a passion translation, it says, for all of God's promises, find their yes of fulfillment in him. Mm -hmm. And as his yes and our amen, it ascends to God and bring him glory. So when his yes and our amen come together, it gives glory to God. Y'all missed it. When his yes and your amen comes together, it brings glory to God. So in other words, to complete this thing, God and Jesus has already said yes, but what are you saying? I say amen. All right. Now, question. How much of what God has promised you is a yes? All. Not some, all. And let me throw this out. Not just the promises in the New Testament. Come on now. Say it, God. Say it. Come on. But the promises even in the Old Testament as well. Amen. Come on, man of God. Come on. Hallelujah. Then we established on last time. What is a yes promise? A yes promise, it's a promise that you can have. You can have it. Now, I can't keep completely go over all of that. You're going to have to listen to all of that. But God says yes to the promise. Yes. So that's the first thing you got to get is if, if God promised is yes. It ain't no maybe and yes. definitely ain't no no or it ain't no that's not for you. Yes. 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 If you're a child of God and if it's in that and it's a promise, you ain't got to ask him, Lord, can I have it? A yes brings you that you can have it. Hallelujah. Somebody shout the promise. the promise. Now, today, let me move to this next step called your faith. Now, are we still in Hebrews? No, uh, well, let's, let's go back to Hebrews, the fourth chapter of Hebrews. And we're going to look up at verse one. Somebody shout your faith. Fourth chapter of Hebrews, verse one says, and it's all in connection to what we opened up with. It says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering to his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Talking about the children of Israel. But the word preached did not profit them. Why not? Not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Not mixed with faith. The easy English translation says, God promised his people that they could go to his special place of rest. That promise is still true for us today. So we must be very careful. Do not fail to arrive in that place. We certainly do not want that to happen. 
We have heard God's good news, just like the people in the wilderness heard his message. But that message did not help them because they did not believe it. They did not trust God like those who obeyed him. Now, repeat after me again. The promise, the promise my, faith. my faith. Now, add this. My faith, my faith makes the difference. Makes the difference. Now, you don't have to turn to it, but Romans 4.16 says, so people get what God promised by having faith. People get what God promised by having faith. Now, I know many of you know this because I've taught it for years. All the promises of God are yes, but equally important, all the promises of God are received by faith. See, now, I can't stress that enough. This is vital. You know, because the will of God for your life doesn't automatically come to pass. Now, I say that because some folks still think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Go ahead, Pastor. Well, if it's God's will, it's going to happen anyway. No, it's not. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Uh-oh. Did we hit a pothole? Come on, Pastor. Because I get out to kind of fix it real quick. That's not true. Come on, Pastor. Amen. See, because if nothing else, if that was true, the Apostle Peter wrote about that it is the will of God that no man should perish and that all should come to repentance. Yes. But we know that ain't true. Everybody ain't going to heaven. Come on now, yes. Everybody ain't going to repent. Yes. Even though that is the will of God. See, it's, it's determined or it's relative to the development of your faith. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. In other words, all of God's promises are definite. Yes. But the manifestation of that promise is according to your faith. I've said for years. That's why an enemy, he don't, we don't want the people of God to, 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 to develop faith. Because first of all, you, you can't receive anything with, if you're a child of God without faith. I've said for years, and I was telling somebody this recently, your destiny is faith defined. It's impossible to fulfill your divine destiny if you don't have any faith. Impossible. Glory to God. So all of God's promises are definite yes. But the manifestation is according to your faith. Now, let's deal with your faith. Let's go to Hebrews 11 and 1. Hebrews 11 and 1. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. The Passion Translation says, now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Now, I'm going to repeat that as we go along. So now let me do a little breakdown analyzation of what we just read. Now faith. Faith is always now. It's always in the now. It, it, faith cannot be in the past and it can't be in the future. It's always in. See, see and that's, that's key because that affects our, the faith confessions. Faith is always right and is now. It, there's no such thing as your yesterday's faith. You ain't got no yesterday faith. Yeah. And you ain't got no tomorrow That's faith. Right. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. It's right now. Right now. Hmm. So now faith is now. Now I know we know that, but we can't forget it. Faith is always in the now. See, that, that, that's why I say, when you say God is getting ready, getting ready is future. You ain't in faith talking like that. Hallelujah. Amen. I was calling myself prosperous while I was still getting the final uh, 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 food stamps and the medical card. And that check for what was about 400 come on, something. Come on, come on, man of God. Say, 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 So faith is always in the now. now, now. Faith is the substance. In other words, the foundation. Yeah. And substance uh, uh, in the Greek, it means uh, standing under. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like foundation. It's like. Uh, you know, this building, there is foundation to hold this up. So it's kind of like uh, uh, when we're talking about substance, it's like the foundation that holds a building. It, 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 it's the unseen support of what you see standing. See, you can't see the support of this building. You can't see it. But it's what's holding it up. You can't see substance, but it's what's holding it up. Okay. Now, so the foundation of the promise or the things you're believing for is faith. And faith is the only evidence you need to know that the promise is real. See, this, this is why I, 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 we, 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 we first dealt with the promise. Yeah, now, yeah. we should be set on the promise. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're in the area of your faith. So, faith is the only evidence that you need to know that the promise is real. In other words, you don't have to see the promise to know that it exists. The evidence or the proof that the promise is real is faith. Yeah. See, we, we know this scripture. We Many of us know it by memory. Faith is something of things hopeful. Evidence of things not seen. Yeah. Evidence. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the only evidence you need is faith. You don't have to turn to it. Mark 9, 23 says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now, I've taught some years ago, belief makes it possible, but your faith makes it a reality. Hallelujah. Now, let me read that passion translation again. Now, faith brings our hopes into reality. And becomes the foundation needed mm -hmm. to acquire the things we yeah, long yeah, for. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is all the evidence required to prove what is still unseen. So faith is what's necessary yeah. to bring what you're believing for into reality. Yeah, yeah. In other words, faith is 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 it brings it into to physical tangible you know where it now can be verified in the sense realm faith is what your promise is built on see this this is the order now see we want to quickly jump to the rest how i get to the rest i got to show you and it begins with the promise then that next area is your faith. Yes, 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 yes. So faith is what your promise is built on. Yeah, yeah. And it's all the evidence that's required. Yes. Now, Hebrews 11 and 1, I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. It says, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed 
of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Now, as I've taught before, I call this the ACT, Assurance, Confirmation, and Title D. So faith is your assurance. What's assurance? Assurance is a declaration intended to give confidence. Assurance also means a promise. But assurance also means freedom from self-doubt. Confirmation means to validate or to verify. Confirmation means to attest to the truth of something. So now faith gives you confidence. It's a promise that frees you from doubt. And it will verify that your promise is true. That's assurance. And confirmation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then that T, title deed. Mm -hmm. Title deed, we understand it represents ownership. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's a title deed? Title deed, here's a definition. A legal deed or document constituting evidence of ownership. Yeah. A document that states and proves a person's legal right of ownership. Hallelujah. Now let me add this. It's a deed transfers the title of an asset to a new owner. And it's usually recorded in the county clerk's office. Stay with me with this. So faith transfers your promise into your hands. And it's recorded in heaven. How do I know it's recorded in heaven? Psalms 119 verse 89 says, Thy word is settled in heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Transfers. Legal right. <laughs> Transfer the title of an asset to a new owner. I did that a few weeks ago. When I sold past the Lord, well, she knew it, sold her car. Signed the title over to a new owner. Now, I couldn't do that if I didn't have the title. Stay with me with this. You see, <laughs> faith is your title deed. Your faith is your proof that healing is yours. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Faith is your proof that Peace is yours. Your faith is your proof that prosperity is yours. See, when you have faith, your name is on the title. See, without faith, you can't prove the promise is yours. You can read the scriptures all day long. Without faith, you can't prove it's yours. 
Because that's why we're not afraid. That's why we play that if game. That what the Lord? Is it for me? Is it your will for me? Is it for me? Yeah, yeah. Amen. You can't prove it. See, see, if that's the case, you know, then how can you claim something that's not yours? You can't. Now, could it be that some of us trying to claim the promise without the required evidence? Without the required evidence. Are you trying to claim it? So you got to remember, we're going to get it. It don't take a lifetime for this stuff. See, something wrong, you still claiming after 20 years. Now, in the natural, depending on who you are, you pay a call for four years, five years, six tops. I'm just saying stuff to do where you get a title. Uh oh, okay, we got we got to say it. This ain't no condemnation. This is location. So could it be some of we trying to claim the promise without the required evidence? Remember, faith is the only evidence required to acquire the things you're hoping for. Now, like I said, this ain't no put down because I ain't been in faith all these years. But once you get there, yes, as Pastor Abel say, for real, for real. Go ahead, go ahead. See, sometimes, sometimes you know, we, we think delays and all of that and seem like things take long. Sometimes it ain't God. It ain't none of that. It's just sometimes uh, 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 it's the matter when your faith actually. Yes. And, and, and some of us still in the process of faith. It's been five years. You just ain't, you ain't there yet. Now, the reason most aren't there yet, because they ain't laboring. You still a part time. Uh oh. Come on, no condemnation. This is location. You can't part time this. As many times, and that's why it takes so long. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, so faith is the only evidence required to acquire the things you're hoping for. Somebody shout your faith. Okay. Yeah. Let me read the amp again. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for. Mm. Being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Yeah. Faith is not revealed to the senses. Yeah. Now, this is information. I know many of you know it, but you can't forget this yeah, when it comes to developing your faith. You can't feel this. I've said it for years. If you're a person who highly emotion, your emotions dictate a lot of things in your life, you're going to really struggle with faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Amen. So you need to ask the Lord, Lord, help me check these emotions. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, amen. 
See, because you, when you're like that, you're, you're used to, you know, something, feeling something to verify truths. Yeah, I love. You. I know you love me because you make me feel a good movie. I always say that a good movie can make you feel. Their feelings can be wrong. You know, back in the day, and I know this don't apply to none of you all. But especially guys, because sometimes our egos, you know, and you'd be thinking, you know, she looking at me. Come on, I'm going back in the day, so don't y'all judge me. Because I know this never happened to you. Then you thought she was looking at you, and then you go in there like, I wasn't looking at you. You'll feel, you'll feel it. See, your feelings was up at first because you thought she was looking at you. See, I'm just telling you, you got to watch them feelings. Yes. Amen. Now, I'm not saying dismiss them, but they got to be put, put in perspective. And you can have religious feelings. Uh-oh, some of y'all choking. You can have religious feelings. I, I, I had to deal with that. You know, oh, and I still do all of that. But years ago, I would base all of that like, oh, my faith got that. I, I remember years ago, we're looking, look, looking for a job. And I, and I felt, po this is year 30 something years ago, feeling positive about it. Oh, Sunday, oh, I think this is it, because I feel it. Did I get the job? Nope. Come on, come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Amen. See, no, I'm just trying, don't you be going off a of feeling. That don't work in the kingdom of God. I just feel good about this. I feel positive. Come on, Pastor. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. See, there's no natural verification of faith. And remember, we read it. Faith is the proof of things we do not see. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for we walk by faith or live by, not by sight, not by our senses. Yes, yes, amen. Yes, amen. Yeah. Amen. See, that's why when you're in faith, you're not moved by what you see. You're not moved by what you hear. You're not moved by what you feel. When you're in faith, you're not moved by that. Well, see, you're not moved because you're at the point that that's mine. Yeah. <sighs> Hallelujah. Now, let me say what I'm not saying before somebody run out of here and go far north. I'm not saying you, not, you don't be sympathetic. Or without Go compassion mm -hmm. to sometimes to the plight of people. That's not what we're saying. Y'all yeah. yeah. know that. Yeah. Now, if you take it to the left, that's because you want to. But see, when you're in faith, you, 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 I always said, you're going to have to fire your feelings and evict your emotions. Yeah. Notice when you're in faith, and this happens to all of us. What are one of the things the enemy tried to do? To, to do, do, do something to deal with your emotions. Come on, you know I'm telling on that. You know I'm telling the truth. You call yourself in faith, and one of the things you do is try to do something that, that's going to that's gonna arouse your emotions in some kind of way. Even if it's emotions of somebody hurt you. Even if it's emotions of somebody talked about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 
Even if emotions, you know, uh, somebody owe you forty dollars and they didn't pay it back. That's one of the first. I'm, I'm telling you. To pull you in that emotional stage. Yes, 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 yes. All of the big manifestation breakthroughs Pastor Lord and I had, believe me, it came with, with, with trying to deal with our emotions. Yes. Some with our kids, with relative, all sorts of stuff. See, he's he doing that. See, you know, you were in faith. You evicted your emotion. You, you fired your feeling. But, but he do this so you can rehire it. Some type of an emotional trip. It can even happen in the church. You start feeling emotions about me. The apostle don't understand. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4.18. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 2 Corinthians 4.18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal or temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. In the voice translation it says, we do not set our sights on the things we can see with our eyes. All of that is fleeting. It will eventually fade away. Instead, we focus on the things we cannot see, which live on and on. So now, question. If you're in faith for your healing, what's seen in the natural? The sickness. If you're in faith for prosperity, what is it that's seen in the natural? The lack. So now you don't focus on that. Focus on that. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm aware of it, but that's not my focus. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know. So first of all, when you're in faith. That situation or that thing that's seen is temporary. See, because your faith will make it go away. See, let's let we. we I read in that translation, all of that is fleeting. It'll eventually fade away. So when I'm in faith, that situation, that thing, whatever it is, that's seen, it's temporary because my faith is going to make it go away. So why am I focusing on something that's temporary? Because my faith is making it go away. See, so that's what it's saying. You ain't focusing on that's temporary. Why would I focus on how my body feeling? Yeah. It's temporary. Because yeah. my faith is making it go away. Yeah. Why would I focus on the lack? That's temporary. Yeah. 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 Come on, man of God. Go ahead. 
You you can tell when folks are in faith for prosperity. Just 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 that's, that's you know what you 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 wanna you wanna go on a, a a trip on Christmas and here we are in March and you be like I don't know. Come on, Pastor. See, cause you still. Uh oh. Uh oh. I guess it ain't temporary, is it? Oh, come on, no condemnation, location. Now, I was, you know, I was nice by saying Christmas. Now, if I'd have said 30 days, half of us probably would If it's temporary. If I'm expecting to not stay broke. Then why am I going to keep planning broke? Yes. See, th this is where we ain't really. Why am I planning to make sure I'm I, at least I, I got two more years of my prescription. If I'm expecting. That this sickness is temporary. It ain't temporary adding two or three more years to it. What's temporary? Come on. No condemnation. Location. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So your faith will make it go away. So now our focus is always on the promise, even though you can't see it yet. But remember, just because it's not physically seen doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Now, remember, it, it says the things which are not seen are eternal. So it has no choice but to exist because it's eternal. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. See, eternity can never be erased. See, that's why the promises of God will never expire. Yes. Amen. Amen. Never expire. Never expire. See, if some of us older can get that. If I got a promise of healing and health, it don't matter if I'm 80. See, if we keep restricting it, see, healing and health, that's for when you're younger. What scripture is that? <laughs> Hallelujah. So they don't expire. They, it doesn't expire. You, you trying to say I can still get married if I'm 90? Yeah. At 90, still with all the benefits. Let a brother man take a drink on that. The promises do not expire. Oh gosh. Let me let me start in this. I'm gonna start closing. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 1. Oh, gosh, I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Because we, we, got, we got a couple baptisms. I got to hurry. First chapter of Ephesians. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before for the foundation of 
the world. Many of us know this. The New Living Version says, let us honor and thank the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has already given us a taste of what heaven is like. Man, you can pause right there. He has already given us a taste of what heaven is like. You know what a taste is. You know, I don't even know if the city, you know, you have it anymore, but here in this city, they used to have a taste of Chicago. It was all the very restaurants. And it's not like you got the full plate of it. You got a taste of it. But that taste was still the exact food that they served if you had got a full plate or went to the restaurant. It's the exact same thing. Instead of getting the whole slab at Leon's. I don't even know if I'm just making some, you know. But you got a taste, you got a piece. It's the same thing. Yeah. So he's saying that he has already given us a taste of what heaven is like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Pastor. Say, say, say. We we got a general idea, not completely on what it's like there. Now, now your, your average Baptist will say, listen, it ain't no more tears there, no more crying there, no more dying there. So what would a taste, hey, a taste of it. Come on, man of God. be like here? Yeah. Come on, man of God. See, this is all tying up into that rest, that, that stress, because nobody is worried in, in, in heaven. Nobody got fear, none of that. Yeah. Yeah. But if I get a taste of that, yeah. which means I know how it feels in this short life yeah. to live without fear. I know how it feels in this short life to live without being stressed. That's a taste. Because over there is eternity. Over here is temporary. So a taste. Over there in my father's house are many mansions. But a taste. Shata ba 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 say, glory to God. Woo, glory to God. Somebody shout, just a taste. Because what it do when in the natural, when you get a taste of something that's good, you want to go there. That's why there's nothing anyone can do or say to make me miss heaven. But I ain't in no rush to go because I got work to do. But in the midst of my work, I'm tasting. So he says he has given us uh, see that's why I be telling some crit. I ain't in all that. I don't like all this stuff. Why you want to go to heaven? Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Amen. Yeah. What you want to go to heaven for? Go ahead. Yeah. That's it. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. If you don't like nice stuff, don't like no none, none, none. What you want to go to heaven for? Sometimes we just turn off our brain. What do you want to go to heaven for? Yeah, yeah. If you don't like, you don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like, nah, I don't like, then you, you're going to get to heaven. You're going to be so mad and disappointed. What you think is there? When the Apostle John says in Revelation that the streets is like pure glass gold, he's only giving a description. He's not saying it's gold. He's only trying to, to, to comprehend it, the, the, the best things he know here on earth. It's not saying that heaven is gold. I don't know what it is. He's just trying to give all of the best type of things that he can articulate it. 
So if you got a problem with stuff here, why do you want to go there? If I don't like sushi, why am I going to the sushi bar? Now I'm rattling that religion and I know it. Hallelujah. See, some folk don't like because you ain't really never had it yet. See, when you all taste to see the Lord is good, you ain't going back. Trust me on that. I'm telling you that right now. You ain't no, you won't. Well, when you when you I ain't talking about just things. Don't don't understand. Because a lot of folks got things. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the things of God. See, there's a difference when God makes you rich and then the world makes you rich. Two different things. How, how you know? Because I know rich folk in the world. And it is two different things. It is not the same. Let me finish. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, he has given us a taste of what heaven is like, even before the world was made. The voice translation says, Blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One, who grants us every spiritual blessing in these heavenly realms where we live in. I don't want to get. I'm gonna get it with that. Heavenly realms where we live in. See, I'm, I'm gonna get into that later on. That that what that when you we're a child of God. When you 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 living in two places at one time. Okay, come on. Let me. <laughs> oh my! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! And you get to a point where that spiritual realm is more real to you than this natural realm. Because you're pulling all your energy and your power out of that spiritual realm. And that's why you can stand when others around you are falling. That's why you can stay healthy when everybody else is sick. That's why inflation don't bother you because you're pulling strength from that other realm. Let me finish. Every promise or blessing God has for you, he's already done. It was laid out. It was given before he made the world. See, that's important that we understand that. Sometimes we think God made provision because of problem. That's not true. Provision was before problem. See, 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 God didn't make healing because sickness came. Healing was here before sickness came. See, 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 that's important to know because we think God has to counteract with the devil. No, that's see the, the devil is trying to counteract. He's trying to twist and revert. See, you, you ain't, I always say you ain't the sick trying to get healed. You're the healed resisting sickness. The provision was here before a problem. Your promise is older than the devil's created problems. So it's already been laid out. Given before he made the world. Now if it's done, it does exist. 
And remember, we don't need to see it to prove its existence. I close with Hebrews 11 and 1 in the Passion Translation. Now faith brings our hopes into reality. Now where do those hopes and things come from? Out of the word. That's your promise. So it brings it into reality and becomes the foundation that you can't see. Needed to acquire those things. See, long, when you got faith, when you, when you got that promise, whatever, here, it's the foundation. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, it, it ain't about the, 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 the promise becoming yeah. manifested. It's about getting the foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You labor for foundation. See, this is easy. It takes time to build foundation. Because you can put something up if it ain't got foundation. Then when the wind and the storm blow, that thing falls. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you once you got foundation. See, even though it's not the building ain't seen yet on the outside. But yes. see, once you got foundation, you got it. So now faith brings our hopes into reality and becomes the foundation needed to acquire the things we long for. It is all the evidence required. All the evidence required. All, if he's promised to give me houses full of all good things that I didn't build. I'm not required to have the money. I'm not re that is that I'm not requ that is not the requirement. Okay, okay. See, not, 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 I went your appetite. That's why I'm going to stop. Because then we're going to really dig some more. That, if I get, that's the only requirement. So it's all the re evidence required to prove what is still unseen. Ask somebody, do you have your evidence? I'll pick it up next time. I'm out of time. Those who've been watching online, this is Resurrection Sunday. Now, every day is a good day to get saved. But if you want to just make it a memorable, can't forget occasion. I got saved on Easter. I got saved on Resurrection Sunday. And if I'm talking to you, man, woman, boy, or girl, this Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For with the heart man believeth, with the mouth confession is made, that if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And if I'm talking to you, man, woman, boy, or girl, and you're saying, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be in the family of God. I, I want to learn more about what, what, what I just heard you preach and teach on. Yeah. Repeat this prayer after me, pretty much the same prayer I prayed 40 plus years ago. Repeat this after me. Dear God in heaven, I come to you right now. I first ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you are the son of God and God raised you from the dead and you are alive right now. Jesus, come into my life and do something with it. From this day forward, 
I will serve you. I will learn of you. I call you Savior. And I call you Lord. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all it takes. That's all it takes. You prayed that prayer wherever you're at. Let us know. We got prayer ministers. If you call us, we're here for you. If you want to have you on social media, we'll respond back to you. We want to send you some free stuff that's going to encourage you, strengthen you. If you're not in church, get in church. You know, wherever you're at, you still got time. I'm sure there's churches around that you can go to. If you're anywhere in Chicago land area, we are here for you. God bless you. We love you. Welcome to the family of God. Come on, let's give God another moment of praise. Hello, my name is Chidi Suji, Executive Director of Stephen Pettis Ministries, and I'm here to tell you about our partnership program, the Stephen Pettis Ministries Faith Force. God intended this partnership to be a spiritual connection between leaders of faith, like Apostle Dr. Stephen L. Pettis, and those they pour into for the sharpening and development of the body of Christ. Philippians 1 says, when you partner in the gospel with one of God's generals, you can be a partaker of their grace or spiritual blessing. So whatever anointing is on Dr. Pettis, be it the anointing of faith, spiritual boldness, supernatural health, prosperity, whatever it is, that anointing can come on you according to your faith and as you communicate or so into the ministry. Partners of the SPM Faith Force are called Faith Responders because in any situation, God expects our response to be faith, for the just shall live by faith. It's a way of life. Other benefits of partnership include discounted ministry materials, invitation to special SPM events, and targeted correspondence when the man of God has a word for you. To find out more about the Stephen Pettis Ministries Partnership Program, visit us at www.stephenpettismen.org partnership or contact us via phone or our social media platforms. We look forward to hearing from you.